Hi guys, it's Barnaby for Spurred On. Now things have got changed a little bit because we had our first Monday night football of three in a row last night. So usually where this show, the five things we learned would be on a Monday. For the next few weeks, it's going to be on a Tuesday. But who cares after results like last night? Not just the result, the performance as well. I also want to tell you a little bit more about Stoke. When I arrived there, uh, it was exactly how the rumour mill says it is. I hadn't been to that game before. Uh, when we arrived in Stoke, the city is grey and dull and windy and cold and horrible. And then we got to the ground and fortunately the wind died down a bit. It was either that or it was just the chanting of Spurs fans that was blocking the wind because the atmosphere was intense. I'll tell you a bit more about that later on in my five things. But the other thing I'll tell you about Stoke, if we go there for a Monday night game again, I can highly recommend hashtag antics at Fiction. Uh, Stoke's biggest student night was there last night till 4 a.m. celebrating the mighty Spurs and their 4-0 win. Come on, you Spurs. Anyway, like I said, this is the five things that I felt we learned from the Stoke game. And I'm going to start with just an overall picture of what I feel is happening with Spurs at the moment. We are coming on strong at just the right time, whilst Leicester are slipping and sliding and falling towards the finish line. Now, that's not me saying I think we're going to win the league. I don't think it's as simple as that. I think there are lots of twists and turns to come. But the way we are playing in the Man United game, in the Stoke game, even the Liverpool game I felt we played well, and the two games before that, since Dortmund, in the league, I think we've started to really pick it up, ramp it up, the performances, the teamwork, the bonding, the, just the loving between the, t uh, the players in the team has been awesome. Also, the fact that I think we now have that settled first team means that we are coming on so strong at just the right time. Momentum, it feels like momentum is shifting slightly. The Vardy thing, I think, will make a difference. It will put questions in the Leicester players' mind. Can we do it without our talisman? Can we do it without the man up front who, who stretches the play, who presses the defenders, who, who makes them make mistakes and who is our main finisher? Now, of course, Riyad Mahrez has scored a lot of goals. Kante is a fantastic player and they've got players who can do it, but it will put questions in their mind. The other thing that will put questions in their mind, Spurs' fantastic form and ability to potentially win all their games. If you're a Leicester fan or a Leicester player right now, you're thinking, God, I just watched Spurs absolutely destroy Stoke at the Britannia on a Monday night. No one goes there and wins 4-0. They just did. They could win all their games. And if they win all their games, we can't really slip up that much. So that's what I'm saying. We're coming on strong. The momentum's with us. Leicester slipping, falling towards the line. Are they going to do that Grand National horse? Is it going to happen? Are they going to just belly flop onto the floor with Spurs coming through and massively Hugo Lloris lifting the trophy? I don't know. It's hard to even think about. It's hard to think about. But let's face it, right now after the results last weekend, it's going to be either Wes Morgan or Hugo Lloris lifting that trophy. I'm pretty, pretty sure of that. What's going to happen, guys? What is going to happen? It's almost too much to think about. Is it my hangover? Is it excitement? I don't even know. Anyway, that's the first thing I felt we learned from yesterday. The momentum, the power shift. It's starting. It's happening. It's Spurs. Second up, I want to talk about the fans. I alluded to them a bit earlier. When I got to the ground, it was over an hour before the game. I was half a mile away and I could hear the Spurs fans already in there chanting, chanting so loud from half a mile away. It was incredible. The buzz is there. I mentioned it in my match review on YouTube last night. Check it out if you haven't already. There's a feeling about Spurs right now that is similar to Liverpool a couple of years ago when it looked like Liverpool were getting on their way to the title. Sky Sports were right behind them, following their every move. And before home matches at Anfield, all the fans would be out, uh, banging on the team bus, chanting, wishing them on. It's starting to happen with Spurs, not just at the lane where it's rocking all the time now, it's buzzing, but in these away games, we were so much louder than Stoke last night. We chanted the whole way through. We are the 12th man. It doesn't even necessarily feel like we need the 12th man because we're playing so brilliantly at the moment anyway, but just the way the boys are playing for us bounces off us back to them. I really feel that. It's like because they're so industrious, because they're so hardworking, they're so bonded, they're so driven, they're so hungry, we just let that flow straight back to them. Never has a Spurs uh, fan base been so united behind a Spurs team. Certainly not in my lifetime. You see a lot of people commenting on YouTube. It hasn't happened in their lifetimes. People who are older than me, going back to um, the early 80s team with Clive Allen where we got close. People are saying this is the best team we've had since Bill Nicholson's 61 double winning side. And it's hard for me to, uh, to argue with that because it's a team. Yes, it's made up of individual brilliance. But 
It is a team who are so together, it is unbelievable. And I think the fans are totally pushing them on. Never have the fans been so important and never are the boys, never have the boys impressed the fans so much. It's a two-way thing, fantastic. It's not something I just learned from last night, but last night just seemed to ramp it up. I've watched the highlights on Sky. You can hear the fans throughout that as well. So loud, so impressive. And you can sense other teams and fans of other teams are starting to realise that this is a Spurs team here to stay. Not a Spurs team that's going to be a fluke for one season, not like a, a freak thing that maybe the Leicester th uh, situation is. We are here to stay. We keep Pochettino, we keep those players growing together. We are going to be incredibly difficult to beat next season, especially with a couple of little additions in there. Some quality Champions League experienced players could be unbelievable. Anyway, second thing I felt we learned is about the fans flowing off the players' desire. Just loved that yesterday. It was so amazing. Third up, I want to talk about Christian Eriksen again. I think I've talked about him in the last few five things I felt we learned. For me, he is everything to this team. He is the clock. He keeps us ticking. Everything goes through him. They fire the ball at him. Trap. Go. Give. Get the ball. Run. Get it back. Give it again. Play that. I'm sorry. The chip through ball to Deli Alley for the second goal, uh, where Deli Alley chips it over uh, the on-rushing Shea Given. That was like a, that was like a, a, a chip shot on a, like a pitch and putt. That was like a golfer. You YouTube Phil Mickelson, some of the shots he can play, where he can basically just make it go high over his own head. That is the amount of skill that Christian Eriksen has to put on that ball. Now, it, it may not look like an obvious, really difficult ball. That's because he's made it look so easy. But trust me, he could have easily tried to just bend that over the man and it would have skidded off and gone into Shea Given's uh, hands because the pitch is, is watered before. But what he does is he almost puts some under on it, some check on it, so it just lifts and almost stops dead onto Deli Ali's thigh on the one bounce. Absolutely unbelievable skill. And then to top it off again, the, uh, for the fourth goal, Deli Ali's volley, he's running into the left edge of the box. Most players, even at the top level at that point, they're just like, well, I'm going to put it into the pomo, the most dangerous area where it could be an own goal or it might m find someone. He gets his head up. He finds Deli Ali with a little chip, a little dink into Ali's path. Don't get me wrong. Deli Ali has so much to do from there because it'd be so easy to lean back, sky that over. He didn't try and hit it too hard. He got under it and it skidded into the, into the back of the net. Fantastic volley, but just the dink from Christian Eriksen, just his all-round play. He doesn't get enough credit, but maybe that's best for us because if he was scoring... 15, 20 goals a season from midfield at this stage of his career, maybe that would mean a move. I don't think he's going to move yet. I think he, let's get one more contract out of him and then if he stays for another three, four years, takes us to the stadium, then you go and play for Real Madrid or Barcelona, Christian. You've deserved it. But he is the absolute playmaker for us. He was fantastic again yesterday. His work rate, oh my goodness. The amount of defensive shifts uh, runs he puts in. 30, 40 yard runs that he knows that he's not going to really affect the game doing that other than to just stop the opposition. But he does it. How many playmakers do you know who are willing to put that in? Not many. He runs further than anyone else. He affects the game uh, more or as much as anyone else. Just an unbelievable player. He's a 50 million pound player, minimum to me. If, if bids were coming in, it would have to be 50 million starting as far as I'm con concerned. Absolutely brilliant. So third thing I felt we learned or I wanted to talk about Christian Eriksen's continued brilliant form. Absolutely wonderful player. Fourth thing I want to talk about. Now, I don't know if you saw this uh, quite as uh, well on TV as I saw it in the ground. Sometime uh, in the second half, Eric Lamella gets in on the uh, left edge of the box and he whacks it. Shea Gibbon saves it, goes out for a corner. Harry Kane was in the middle. Eric Dyer was coming in on the edge. And Eric Dyer went absolutely mad at Eric Lamella. He screamed at him. I couldn't hear what he was saying, but he was so angry. You could see it on his face. And Eric Lamella was, uh, and this is good, he's no shrinking violet. He rose to it and he actually started approaching Eric Dyer. They're quite a long way away from each other, but Spurs players got in the way and there was a real scrap, it was a real fight. Now, some people might think, oh, that, that's not good. You know, you're balling out, uh, you're digging out your fellow teammate, you know, you, uh, but let me tell you, after that, Eric Lamella was sensational. It turned him on. It made him play better. It made him work even harder than he was already. And he was working hard. And it was just what he needed. He needed to prove, he felt, I could tell, that he needed to prove Eric Dyer wrong and prove that he is a top player on that day, in that performance, in that game. And then, to top it off, for that goal, for I think it's the third goal for Harry Kane, he did exactly what Eric Dyer had wanted him to do it before. He could have shot. He was in on goal. He laid it across to Harry Kane for an open goal. Eric Lamella just... 
I, I'm so impressed by the way he kind of, he didn't let his head drop when he was shouted at by his teammates. He just thought, well, I'm going to show you. And then he did exactly what he should have done earlier. So he learned from it. It was fantastic. It shows what a leader Eric Dyer is. It's so important in teams. Uh, any team that's going to go well, it's, uh, do well, it's so important that you've got players who are not afraid to tell other players when they've done it wrong. They need to be all able to do that to each other. And you can tell with this team, not only do they do that, but they don't hold grudges. They learn off it and they're a team. Afterwards, you saw the Instagram post uh, and all over Twitter, them in the change room all hugging each other. What a squad, what a team. Fourth thing I want to talk about, well done Eric Lamella, well done Eric Dyer. Fantastic bit of stuff that I saw just because I had a great view from the ground. You didn't really get a, a, full, a full view of it uh, on TV, just a little bit of Eric Lamella shouting, I think. But it was a, a really amazing to see, I loved that. So new Spurs for me. I know, don't want to get caught up in this whole old, new, old Spurs, new Spurs too much, but just the new, the new kind of level of Spurs with that grit and determination, fantastic. Finally, fifth thing I want to talk about, Harry Kane. You know... Uh, what more can you say? There, I, I, I read something just then that uh, Alan Shearer recently um, was at uh, the Masters, at the golf, and he was with Alex Ferguson. They were watching Tottenham Hotspur versus Man United, and Alan Shearer asked Fergie what he thought of Harry Kane, and Fergie said, I think he reminds me of you, except he just doesn't moan at referees as much. And we all know, I've said it loads of times, how much Alan Shearer loves Harry Kane. Alex Ferguson loves him. He is just, he's the closest to an all-round striker that I can think of since Shearer. Now, Aguero, he can do it all, Aguero. But he's not, you know, he's not going to run. He, he just doesn't, I think maybe because of his diminutive stature, there are things he's not going to win. He's not going to win flick-ons, whereas Harry Kane can do that as well. Now, obviously, Aguero, he's quicker than Kane, so he's got that on him. But apart from that, I think quality-wise, they're very tight in, in terms of being the top two strikers in the league. Obviously, Jamie Vardy's had a brilliant season. It'll be interesting to see how he does next season. But for me, Harry Kane, I would literally, I would not swap him for any other player in this league. Um, you know, I could say I wouldn't swap him for any in the world. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. But you'd say, oh, what about Ronaldo and Messi? But I'd say, you know, be realistic. Also, you know, Ronaldo's 32. Messi's coming up to 30, I think. So, Harry Kane, 23 years old. 20, I think he's 22 years old. Absolute world at his feet. If he just keeps scoring like this, he scored, I think, 23 in his last 25 games in the Premier League. That is unheard of. That is Aguero. Only Aguero can get close to those kind of levels over the last few seasons. The other thing I just wanted to mention about Harry Kane, there are certain places on the pitch where when he gets the ball around the box, certain little areas, certain little angles, he knows most of the time he's going to score. And the one uh, that he scored against Arsenal and then the one he scored against Stoke yesterday where he bends it into the far corner, that's another place. Defenders just can't let him be there. The other one is when he's on the right side of the box and he can hit it into the bottom left. That's almost like his trademark finish. You see him do it so much that you think, I think he just practices time after time after uh, training at being there, shooting it across, being the other side, bending it into the far corner. Keepers can't stop those things. I'm, you know, I'm a keeper, I know it. I'm not a professional, but I know. There are certain things, even though you know where they're going, you can't stop it because it's too quick or it's too much in the corner. I don't want to bang on about Woolwich, but back in the day when they were at their best, when Henri was playing, Vieira, Petit, Pires, Henri would always get in positions. You're like, I know how you're going to finish this, but keepers couldn't stop him. He was always going to open his body up, put it in the bottom right-hand corner. He would do it time after time after time, but you can't stop it. And it's the same with Harry Kane now. He's a fantastic striker of the ball. He's so composed. His all-round play is so fantastic. And most importantly, I think, and what has made him who he is, his confidence. Absolute and utter belief in himself. And he's a down-to-earth lad. What is not to like about Harry Kane? Fantastic. The fifth thing I felt we learned, or I wanted to talk about from last night, but overall, just a brilliant, brilliant away trip. Guys, if you don't get yourselves on away days, find a way there. It might not be this season anymore because tickets are so hard to get to, uh, hold of for Spurs games now, but just fantastic experience. The Spurs fans, I can't talk highly enough about you. Anyway, guys, let me know what you thought of my five things I felt we learned in the comments box below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel on YouTube. Follow us on Twitter, at Spurred on TV. Stay behind the boys. Next up, West Brom at home. Come on, you Spurs. Hi, guys. Bumpy for Spurred on outside the Britannia Stadium. Spurs have done something that not many teams I can think of. Let me know if you can think of any, but not many teams come to the Britannia and win 4-0, especially not on the hallowed, as everyone talks about, cold Monday night in Stoke.